Hello, good afternoon, morning, evening. Welcome to the Oak Island Research Channel for another video today. I'm quite excited because there's a lot of things in this video that are new discoveries and explanation that could open a whole new area of investigation for uh, myself and Michael, if Michael wants to join that dead poet society. So I'm sorry, I could be coughing a little bit. I'm a bit sick, I think I got COVID. So uh, I'm sorry for the quality of the video. And I got a personal message, by the way. <laughs> it's the first time I used the channel for that. Um, Mr. Parker, Michael, uh, receive your Christmas card. Love you all and talk to you soon. That was my private message. Okay. The Dead Poet Society. Um, fair use. I'm going to use material that I don't own just for research purposes. We're going to start our journey with the Cremona document, a, a book na uh, written by Don Rue. Um, and Don, in Christmas 2011, as we all know now, visits Zina Halpern at her home with Harry Weimer being around. Zina's friend, he's a French teacher. You know that story, right? I'm just putting context into this video. Teacher in the USA. Don Rue flipped through a book named Introduction to Anthropology because uh, there was, finds a, he finds a handwritten note on the last page of the book written by Bill Jackson. Uh, Don inherited of all research material from Bill Jackson. Bill Jackson being the one presumably who found the uh, seven pieces. He had it in his hand at one point, and uh, he was in contact, obviously, with Jim McInnes since he received La Formule and the Mary's Note from Jim McInnes. We don't have the name of the author of Introduction to Anthropology, so I just, there's several books that are named like this, so I just picked one up. So again, in Christmas, Don visit Zina, he goes through this book, he finds at the end of the book a note, and this is the note. And the note, here written in plain English, leads him to investigate Anati. And Anati is the author of another book that Don Rue inherited from Bill Jackson. And Don Rue had lent that book to Zina Alpern at the time. So in Christmas 2011, he goes back to Zina. There's two versions of this. Don says in his book that... Uh, he found this note at home. Zina says this note was found on that very same Christmas 2011. So it's not very important, but they both differ in that very first note. And so they uh, read this note, Anati holds the key, and you know the, the lines and they explain about the Ontario schematic, probably, I'm not fully sure on this, and there's that enigmatic uh, note at the at the bottom, which is La Bella Roma Rolo Mia Monte Leostrica, which was translated something like the beautiful Roman lady Rolo shows me the oyster. And that's that, nobody ever made sense of this, and and I don't, and it just doesn't fit. Like this is so enigmatic. Who's that lady Rolo? On my French channel, on the same channel, but on one of the French video where I explained this, somebody who probably speaks very well Italian saying, could be a sculpture, a rollo could be a roll, so a sculpture near Vatican. And I checked and I couldn't find anything, but I found something else. So still Christmas 2011, Don asks Zina the, the book name Palestine Before the Hebrews, which was written by that Emmanuel Anati and was... Uh, given in the heritage and then lent to Zina. He flips through the books, he feels between his finger that the last page is thicker than it should be. He asks Zina for a knife. We know it happened in the kitchen. Harry Weimer testifies. And he cuts out the top of the page, which is actually a double pasted or glued page forming a pocket. And from this pocket, he gets two documents, which we know very well. That's the story of the discovery of both La Formule and Mary's Note and of Rochefoucauld map. So that's that's the agreed story. Just one second. That note, I'm not happy with that translation. Let's have a look more detail. Bill Jackson wrote his, this note and geez, he was writing like a pig within French. That is, my gosh, is it so according to Don and Zina and maybe Harry, which were the first one to translate 
that handwriting into this text, this word to them is Bella. Okay, I buy it. To them, this word is Roma. Now, it would mean this is an R. And when we look here, the R's, the capital R's don't look like this. I'm thinking more of a bet this is a D. This is a D, which makes Dona, which is an interesting word in Italian. And if this is a D and not Roma, what about this one? It's the same letter. This is a D also and not an R as they thought. So what we got here as a text is Dona Dola, Mia, and here they say Monte. But again, this is an O or this is an E, which makes Mente, which is a very interesting Italian word. La Donna, la bella Donna, della, mia, mente. Again, this is a O, this is a E, could be. And as much as this sentence, the first translation doesn't mean anything. The beautiful lady from Rome rolls and shows me her ostrica or the, 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 the oyster. As much as this one in blue is, is meaningful and, and check this out. I do believe the translation is really, or, or what he wrote was what is written in blue. La bella donna della mia mente. La, do, la bella donna della mia mente is a poem by Oscar Wilde. The poem is in English, but the title was in Italian. And the translation is the beautiful lady on my mind. That's what Bill Jackson wrote. He wrote a indication a hint just like anati was a hint i believe la bella roma rollo mia monte is a hint about either the poem or oscar wilde or if i was don rue and i really inherited from everything as much as i look in anati i would check if in the books that bill jackson left him or the notes or the poem if there is this poem because there might be some hidden indication and hidden hints so we know now Bill Jackson is refer referring to a very important document because this note, the note here on the left, uh, he knew he would be dead by the time somebody would find it. And that was just the beginning of our journey with Anati and the Rochefoucauld map. So I take it, this, this is just the Anati. This is what happened to the, um, to the Ontario uh, pieces, puzzle, puzzle pieces. And this is more to look for, I think, complementary hint. Okay, so that's Oscar Wilde, who was uh, quite a tormented man and spent his life between Great Britain and Paris. Uh, you, I, I haven't, I'm not much into poetry, <clears throat> but I must admit for the last 72 hours, I never read that much about poets and I discovered extraordinary things I'm going to share with you. So this is Oscar Wilde and that's the reference. Next, on Mary's note, we have two references the one here, le vent se lève, il faut tenter de vivre avec le, avec le, in French, normally should be le cimetière marin, but here it's not written le cimetière marin, it's written le cimetière marie, or marine. Those words, this sentence is from Paul Valéry. He wrote a poem in 1920, which easily help us understanding when this was written after 1920 obviously and Paul Valéry in the poem which is a very long poem called the Marine Cemetery the Cimetière Marin has got this is the last six lines the last rhymes and here is the sentence we are interested in <coughs> so now we tie with another poet Paul Valéry was as famous in France as uh, uh, as my friend uh, uh, Oscar Wilde was for Great Britain uh, and, and the uh, Western culture. But that's not it. There's another reference to an individual, Mr. Hayward. Mr. Hayward, I found two candidates and maybe Bill Jackson or Tim McInnes or whoever wrote that note did it on purpose to refer to two f important Haywards. This gentleman here, I'm going to detail, and that gentleman there, I'm going to detail. Both are named John Hayward. Hayward. The first one, John Hayward, historian, 1569-1627. Twisted biography, kind of linked with Shakespeare work and definitely linked with Bacon. 
he was contemporary of Bacon. And I'll let you read, you can post the video. But there's a link between him and Bacon and maybe Shakespeare, who knows. And interesting, that's not the one I would pick for the continuation of this expose or this video. But I think whoever wrote that note used Hayward for double reason. He was talking about this Hayward gentleman, but also about that one using the same word. Because everything's tied. This John Davy Hayward was... So 1905-1965, and he was, he shared a house with his close friend, the poet T.S. Eliot. He basically inherited himself all the material from Eliot and published it and etc. etc. So there's a strong connection between that Award and Mr. Eliot, but we don't know about Mr. Eliot. So let's discover a bit about Mr. Eliot. Um, Award, uh, why did I keep that here? Uh, because it was is that a muscular dystrophy? Quickly, I can't remember why I put uh, maintain his literary friendship. Best remember contribution to the works of T. S. Eliot. Yeah, Eliot. Yeah. So it could be this Edward. Now this Eliot, sir, here he is. We are on. Uh, uh, where was he born? 1888 and 1965. Uh, he became. British citizen, and what is it that I wanted to show you? Can't find it. Uh, but that's who is according to Wikipedia. I thought there was something more interesting in this page. That's why I copied it, but obviously not. I'll come back. Um, so Elliot connects with Hayward, which is shown on Mary's note. Now let's let's look at connections. This is from the, I think it's Drou, yeah, Drou. Drou is the equivalent of Sotheby in France. So it's an auction house and they've been selling, I don't know if we got the year here. Uh, it was a long time ago, uh, 2007. Yeah, 2007. And this is the son of Paul Valéry, François Valéry, who is selling a whole bunch of letters and, and talking and, and journals from Paul Valéry. So if you, that's available on the internet and there is part of that pack of things to buy at the auction, the item number 93, which is the letter from T.S. Eliot writing to Mrs. Paul Valéry, the wife of Paul Valéry after he died. And it's just saying, you're, uh, it shows in French, I'm not gonna translate everything, but it shows they are quite close friend. And John Hayward, here he is, replies and thanks Mrs. Paul Valéry. They, they knew each other very well. I found here, it's a, a, an essay or a PhD document, I guess, from a university in Korea, believe it or not. But what's interesting is that the, whole, the guy makes his whole thesis on the connection and the relationship between T.S. Eliot and Paul Valéry. If you're talking about Eliot, you're talking about Hayward. That's, that they were close, working, living together. So the three of them knew each other. And you can pause and I'll let you read all this, but they were connected. So Valérie, Elliot, and Hayward are connected. And Valérie is from Mary's note, Le Vent Se Lève, and Hayward is on the same Mary's note. Are they trying to point to T.S. Elliot? Maybe. On another size, Oscar Wilde, which um, died early, he died in 1900, so he couldn't connect with some of those people. But he connected very well to somebody named André Gide. And André Gide is one of the most famous uh, writer, poem writing in, we have in France. So there's a connection between Oscar Wilde and Gide. And what I came to realize studying all those guys is that in the, in the 20s, after Oscar Wilde was, was dead, in Paris, in the 20s, it was crazy Paris, and all those people mingled together. Um, here, I've got definite proof, this is the book collecting all the letters sent back and forth between Valéry and Paul Gide on those years, for 60 years. So there's a direct connection between Paul Valéry and André Gide, and André Gide is connected to Oscar Wilde. So we have a strong Paul Valéry-André Gide connection, uh, a strong André Gide-Oscar Wilde connection, and a weak Paul Valéry-Oscar Wilde. I don't, maybe they've met each other, but I don't have definite proof. So what's, what, let, let's re rewind everybody we've seen, and we see this, something is going to be crazy. 
So Oscar Wilde, which is described in the handbook note that Bill Jackson left, leading to Anati, is connected to André Gide, who is himself connected to Paul Valéry. Valéry we find as the Marine Cemetery. Valérie is connected with Elliot. We see the letter of uh, Elliot writing to Mrs. Valérie after Valérie died. And Elliot is connected to John Hayward because that's his personal secretary. I, the, I don't want to talk about their sexual relationship, but it seems it's not all clear in that story at the time. You'll, you'll make up your mind by reading those things, but those guys were not straight. It's, it's the least we could say. But there's a connection here on the right hand side as well. Now, you're going to hang on the edge of the seat you're sitting on, or if you're not sat, you're going to sit down, because all those people, except Oscar Wilde, who was dead, all those people connect in the Parisian clubs to somebody who's got a lot of influence and whose last name you're not going to believe, Edmé de la Rochefoucauld. I'll, I'll show you in the slide later how they connected. Edme de la Rochefoucauld, 1895-1991, long, long, long. She was uh, an extremely well-known and brilliant humanist and writer, and she was uh, president of the Book Prize Femina, which is super famous in France. Somebody of real influence. She met so many presidents, and I mean, she was she 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 was. Uh, in the 20s in the clubs, after war, very influent, when we say after war, Second World War, and, and until late. So, wow, when I discovered that, I was like, that can't be, come on. So is, is Bill Jackson trying to point us back to the Rochefoucauld family? So let's see uh, the connections between Edme Rochefoucauld now and T.S. Eliot and John Hayward. So this is the Eliot Hell letters from 1936 written by Eliot. And it's very long, so I'm just uh, taking a snip here where it's interesting. It's here. Thursday, uh, Friday. F so it's day by day. Huh? It's a journal. Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Go. So it's, it's, it's Elliot writing. I went to John Seward to meet Jenny and the Duchess of Rochefoucauld, which is nobody but Edme. Wanted to discuss getting the murder company to give performances in Paris. Theater play. Theater play reminds me of Shakespeare and Bacon. I'm not too much on the bacon side, you know, only uh, uh, about the map and everything, but why not? Let's keep open. There might be something. But that's interesting that she, a heir of Rochefoucauld, was in contact with those guys uh, that Bill Jackson refers to some document. Edmé Rochefoucauld, was, was she connected with Paul Valéry? From what I read, I think they were sleeping together, for real. He was painting her, he was... And here, uh, it's, in, it's in French, I'm sorry, I couldn't translate everything, and most of the documents I found were in French. But uh, where is it? I, uh, uh, so under the pseudonym of Gilles Bermeau, she was writing her under a pseudonym. The Duchess started poetry in about 15 publications, including Human Life, thanks to her club in her hotel on United States Square in the 16th she met writers, um, um, scientists, diplomats, politicals, famous, especially the poet Paul Valéry, for whom she became a great fan. But I can find many articles on the net. This is just one of them showing there is connection. I found stories and, and his journal where he's painting her. He was going on vacation at his place. Gosh, she was very influent in his life. So, wow, <coughs> a lot of poems, a lot of... This is just strange, especially when you remember that, according to my ex-girlfriend, we discovered that this piece was an Alexandrine, which is a poetry form, and we're talking about a ver. A ver is a verset. And that was a long time ago I did that. She, she kind of pushed me to do that. I counted the number of syllables. That's how you determine it's an Alexandrine, 12 syllables. A small rhyme, a small there. So I did that everywhere I could find them. And you can find, and she was the one telling me, you get some rhythmic, some rhythm into that document. Les, les Sud Indiens, five syllable. Travail très bon, five syllable. Le Lionceau, three. De, de Talmont, three. And everywhere I counted the syllables. And there is, there, it's on purpose. I, we don't know why, but you're running with the threes, the fives, fives, 
threes and six. That's how it's structured, which is some kind of poet structure, isn't it? And also what I did is highlight in color all the rhythm, sorry, all the verset, the rhymes. Trou, sou, sou, vous, same sound. Age, age, same sound. Bon, on, same sound, etc. And if, I mean, I'm an engineer. When I do things even outside of the engineering field, my background and the way I think and work is, is tainted by my engineering years. A poet writing this map would be tainted by and would be influenced by sound, rhythm, rhymes, and things like that. I'm not saying any of those guys wrote that map. I don't know, but it's just peculiar. And now, since I ask you to hang on the edge of your seat and be seated, I got another one for you. So again, if you, if you went up and got a beer, just sit down again, because this one is also interesting. That gentleman we never heard of. I never heard of two hours ago. Louis Chen, 1899-1973, my year of birth. That's his Wikipedia. He was part of that gang, of the uh, Rochefoucauld gang and, and those, those people. He became a contributor to the magazine Les Etudes and published the first volumes of Vie and Oeuvre d'Ecrivain, Life and Arts of Writers, published by Bossuet. He studied Paul Valéry. He studied André Gide. He confirmed membership to Le Tout Paris, which is the jet set, he confirmed, his confirmed membership of the Two Paris made him invited by his friend Edme La Rochefoucauld. There she is again. And why am I interested in that guy? Look at this. That guy was born on December 8th, 1895 in a 1,200 inhabitant small village named, are you ready guys? Named Talmont. The Talmont here. This is a very, very small village. What's the probability that somebody famous gets born there ever? What's the probability that the same guy knows Edme de Rochefoucauld, who knows all those perpetrators we're seeing on all those documents? What's, I mean, I'm not saying he wrote the map, but it's disturbing that this guy connected with all the others that we find on all on those documents was born in Talmont. It can't be a coincidence. No, it can't. But I don't have the answers. I don't understand. It seems Bill Jackson is bringing us to the poetry world, which is not my world, I must admit. I'm not very happy <laughs> when I'm reading all this. It's kind of boring. But still, this is just super weird and super coincidental. So uh, this is all fresh from 72 hours. Uh, I'm going to deep dive more. I need more time. Uh, I need to understand what was the connection of those people in Paris. They were all born in the late 1890 something. They all knew each other. Uh, what's up with them? I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Don't hesitate to write comments. More comments means more traffic and more people discovering the channel. Same for subscribing. Uh, you guys have been awesome in your comments on different uh, videos and uh, also Facebook pages. I thank you very much. It cheers us up and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.